the heat has a big impact on us as humans and on our human bodies. We're not very well designed to cope with long uh, stretches of days above very high temperatures, particularly when it doesn't cool down at night because it doesn't give our bodies a chance to recover. We know that when we've had heat waves before, uh, we have more ambulance call outs, uh, particularly a couple of days after we've had the heat waves. But on the other hand, we do know that there are many things we can do as a population and as individuals to protect ourselves and protect the whole community. And I wanted to go through some of those today and just pick up on some of the previous points made. Now, in terms of who's most vulnerable, actually, uh, we all can be vulnerable if we put ourselves in the situation of being right out in the middle of the day uh, at three o'clock when it's it's the hottest part of the day and not drinking anything. But there are, uh, there are higher vulnerabilities for um, very young infants and children, also women who are, or people who are pregnant, uh, and also for <coughs> older people because their physiology doesn't adjust as well as uh, do younger people. But also people who have got chronic health problems, and some of those things are kidney disease, but people with heart problems and uh, respiratory lung problems, but also things like diabetes, because the fluid balance can be messed up when it's so hot. So those are the vulnerabilities. Now in terms of the things that we all need to think about, first up, and really just reiterating some points already made, just try not to be out in the heat of the day. Try and avoid uh, the heat. And so if you've got things planned, um, you might have appointments and such like, it may be possible to reschedule those. Uh, think about if I, I like exercising, I still try and make sure I get my exercise in, but I do it very early in the morning as it's the coolest part of the day and it's very shady and the sun hasn't come, come up yet. Um, so try and keep you, you out, of the, out of the major part of the heat. The second is, is to keep up drinking, and I'm talking about water here. Give alcohol and caffeine a miss. It's not rehydrating, it can do you harm. Uh, so really think about getting in and hydrating yourself and making sure that you've got water near yourself that you're regularly taking in during the day. Think about your home environment, try and keep it cool. Uh, I go around and shut all the windows, have the doors shut and draw the curtains because it keeps your house cooler. Uh, again, I reiterate, please don't try and skimp on the air conditioning this weekend. Have it turned on, but double check that you've turned it over from heating to cooling. Um, just double check that you've done it uh, and uh, make sure that's running um, during the day to keep your house cool. If you don't have air conditioning, and I know that applies to many people, then use a fan and putting a wet flannel or a wet towel up around your neck can really help keep your body cool. Also, you can try and uh, factor in a nice cool bath or a cool shower a couple of times during the day because it just keeps your body temperature down. Now, uh, also for people that have difficulty keeping their house cool, think about alternatives. So there's public spaces such as um, uh, libraries and uh, shopping centres, but even maybe think about scheduling a visit to the cinema where it's nice and cool and it gives your body a chance to cool down and keep your body temperature down. Uh, importantly, it's a, a, a good to be thinking about your neighbours and your loved ones. So people that um, uh, have those higher vulnerabilities, just give a check in on them, make sure they've got enough water to drink and they know what they're doing to keep themselves cool uh, during the day. Um, and if you do need to go out, please do the slip slop slap. It's old fashioned, but it's really helpful. Wear your hat, wear your sunglasses and make sure you've put your sunblock on. And finally, um, uh, the, really importantly, uh, just never, ever, ever leave a child in a car. Uh, it gets so hot so quickly and also, um, as has been mentioned, the same goes for pets. Um, so there are some things that we can all think about to keep ourselves um, uh, healthy uh, during the, this heat wave. It's also worth, um, and there's a lot of detail in this, but, but I would encourage people to go to the SA Health website um, and look at uh, early signs of dehydration and heat exhaustion. Heat stroke can be fatal and you need to intervene quickly. So this is when somebody has let themselves get too hot and they haven't been drinking enough and they're getting dehydrated. Uh, and um, there are some uh, signs to look out for. People might be saying they're feeling a bit thirsty. They might start to get a bit faint, um, a bit light headed, a bit headachy. Uh, they might even get some cramps in their muscles and it's very important to pick up those early signs and deal with it and get that person into a cool space, uh, get them to lie down, start to get them uh, drinking on some water uh, and making sure that those um, early signs of dehydration and heat exhaustion go away. 
If it doesn't go away in, in you know in roughly an hour, it might be time to think about um, get, getting to, getting that person to hospital and calling an ambulance because heat stroke can be fatal. Uh, and heat stroke, the the big the main change with this with heat stroke is that you get a really rapid increase in your body temperature. The person starts to get quite confused. Their um, their speech might be slurred. They get a bit disorientated. They may even have some strange aggressive behaviour. And they can then go and have a convulsion and even go into a coma. And that is really dangerous. We don't want to see that happen to anybody in South Australia. So start with the basics. Prepare yourselves. Keep yourselves cool all day. But if you see anybody getting into trouble with uh, dehydration or, or heat stroke, uh, then, you know, really uh, know the signs and know how to get on and treat it. Um, so I, I just mentioned quickly as well the, the bats um, and the real concern for us from a health perspective is the Australian bat lissa virus. This is a reason we don't want anyone going near an injured or dead uh, bat. If um, you do get bitten or scratched, it's very important that you go and wash the area thoroughly for five minutes with soap and water, put some betadine or iodine on, but also get on the phone and ring the poisons information or ring your doctor, uh, because depending on the exposure, um, you may be recommended to have a rabies injection. Um, so, but best of all, prevent it happening. Um, if you're at Wome Adelaide this weekend, I'm sure there'll be messaging out about this. It's often the little baby uh, bats that are, that are the ones Ones that drop from the trees and they might look cute but keep your kids away from them and just uh, call the authorities to have them dealt with just don't go near them okay thank you very much